Alright, so welcome to the Cascade tier list. I'm doing a two because, well, what better way to wrap up season two than to talk about some of my favorite characters? My three it's basket that like all of them. So here we are. I to do it because there are other have, but those take more time, so be on the lookout for this. So we have the characters. I got creative with the tier, the Toru tier. Toru, we have the best. If you watch my other videos, you'll know that I like, I like call a lot of characters the best. I made that its own. They're like interesting, great characters. Like, but not quite the best. Uh, we have thrown into volcano because we really do need to be thrown into a volcano. And then we have void. Basically, I feel nothing about it. And you could say that void should be higher volcano because this is a character like I hate. This thing. But the way Fruit Basket presents it, like in, by the way, spoilers for the first two seasons, uh, the way it presents it is like. How you felt nothing about his mom at some point. That was worse than him. Uh, I am me. So, wanting to throw them into a volcano is shown to be better than just feeling nothing, so that's why we're doing it. Might be not how I would put the. Also, this is how I feel about them, not necessarily how good or bad the character. So, uh, we're going to start off here. Well, we have a Toru, so we're going to put her in the Toru tier to start because, well, he's Toru. We have Akito, who obviously we're going to throw him into Volcano. I mean, it's Akito. He deserves being a Volcano. It should be pretty obvious you've seen him. Ayumi, we're going to put in the best. This is a character that I came to like a lot more throughout season. I found him green. I really didn't like him there. But when he showed up to help Yuki in episode 15 at the parent-teacher conferences, that was just amazing. And we saw how his over-the-top ridiculous really helped Yuki. It was interesting to see like, his relationship with Yuki, even if there is definitely some animosity and frustration. But shows they at least like respect each other and see... Yeah, I some are like taken from uh, nineteen whatever uh, year. That oh, you're sure who some of these characters are because it was yeah, this is Hana. But yes, Hana is also going into the best as she is. I I just love Hana's personality, and she has her whole wave powers thing too, which like everyone. But she also has a really rich and interesting backstory too. I guess so I can talk to my microphone better. Uh, we have Haru, who is also the best because, again, he is. I love how he's like somewhat quiet, maybe not the smartest character, but he really does have a heart for all the characters, especially Yuki, but like how he's also there for like Hiro and Kiba. And when we all the others, he's there to watch over them. And great to see. Haru's kind of, Haru is uh, the best. We have Tori, who is a good character, definitely, and he's interesting, but I don't have as much of a connection as I do with the others to put in the best tier. Well, like, again, it's interesting, but there's not the connection. He hasn't had any, like, really awesome moments, but definitely a good character. And we have Hero, who he, Hero is also the best. He's a character I find really interesting. He is very immature. He lashes out, but throughout the series, we've seen him become aware of his own faults and try to fix them, try to get better. We especially saw that in the recent, I think it was episode 23, like he was trying not to get angry, lash out, of pe or lash out out of anger. That just shows a lot of growth in him. I wish that we got more time with him and uh, Kisa. Well, Kisa's also. Margaret? Kagura, right? Yeah, Kagura. Kagura, she goes in the best. By the way, within the tiers, it's not really ranked, just like where I'm putting them. Yes, Kagura. Another character I did not like at first, but I definitely came around, especially with her big episode this season with Kyo, like how, and seeing how she 
how she like pitied him that made her want to love him out of some sort of obligation. And yeah, there's definitely a lot here about character grow and struggle and try to figure things out. It shows love is not a good thing, or it can be twisted and tainted. So this season was like Kagura realizing that her love for Kyo wasn't like true love and wasn't right. Like her coming to accept herself and him through that. That was all really great. And this is uh, Kakuru, who definitely different. It's interesting, though. I really like his relationship with Yuki. Like, how he is able to force Yuki out of his shell. I don't think he's quite the best yet, though. He might be, though. I know that a lot of people really like him. And we'll see how I feel after the third season, which I hope that we get. Uh, we have Kana, who is basically just been in the background in his um, backstory. I don't have much of a connection with her, so she's going to go into Void for now. Maybe we'll see her more next season, but even if not, I don't think it much. And this is, yeah, Kazuma. Kazuma is obviously the best just for everything he did for Kyo and the other characters too. I really like how he's the sort of mentor character able to watch over the device. I like we saw that with him taking Ben. There's a connection with Yuki and Kagura as well, which I hope we see more of that. And yeah, he's he's great. He's definitely a character that all the other characters need. You have Kisa, who yes, Kisa is the best. I'm putting her here. It's, Kisa is like so adorable, and I love how they show her trying to be like quiet and just overcome past, and like very slow, and it doesn't like change the whole nature of her character. But progress is being made, and yeah. Plus, any time she's with Toru is just... We need more scenes with that. Oh, uh, we have Kurno, who... I'm going to go with interesting, because he is. He hasn't really gotten much time to stand out yet so far. But especially with his relationship with Duo, I think we might get that soon, hopefully. I hope. We'll have to see, though. So, yeah, with him skidding this from Momiji, I definitely think going to happen with him. Oh, we have Kyo, who Kyo is best kitty, so there's also Kyo. I noticed I'm not ranking them in order within the tiers, but yeah. Kyo is a very fascinating character, and I love his love for Tony, how much he cares about her, be there for her. He is probably the best character that knows and knows Toru. Like, Toru is so much about taking care of others that gets about herself and Kyo is able to do that able to be there for her and she doesn't even realize she needs it yeah Kyo is the best and Kyoko is also the best because I mean she raised Toru and that automatically makes her good but also the strength that she has the way she's able to help out Uo and Kyo and also Toru but all in different ways and in knowing knowing what they need so yeah, Yoko is an amazing mother, and she like lays the foundation for everything else in this. Uh, Machi, I believe. Yes, Machi. Machi, I'm going to put her in the best as well. This is partly because just how much I can relate and connect to her. She hasn't had a lot of time so far. We just like really got her backstory, but that backstory was really good and really powerful for me. So she goes here. It's probably more than she deserves at this point, but hey, it's my list. I'll leave this template in the description if you guys want to make your own. Uh, we have this student, Kyoto. Yeah, I don't have any thoughts about it. Then we have the teacher. Yeah, Mayu. Uh, yeah, she's interesting. It's very cool how they make a teacher like that. Sort of a background character, but then they bring her in where it connects with the other adults and, that, and have that tie into the children's story and all that. So, yeah, she's great. Uh, we have Megumi, who... I don't know. He, I, yeah, he's definitely not Tyro. And I do like him, kind of. I'm not throwing him into a volcano. But I'm going to go with interesting slash great, though. Again, I like him. He's not, like, as fleshed out as the others. 
I like how he's there for Hana so much. Just it's his own sort of thing and like uh, scared uh, Matoko and those others. So he is great, but I don't think he's done enough to be the best, so he's going here. Uh what character's name? Oh, Minami. Yeah, she is more normal and we need someone else in this tier, so she's also going to the volcano. Uh Mine I don't really um, for her, I mean, just fun, I guess, but yeah, special. And Michan, who basically disappeared after season one, so yeah, he goes here. Then we have Momo, who is precious. I love how much she cares about Momo, not knowing the truth about him, just how she wish wishes she had a brother like him. We're gonna say Momo G for later. For should have done that when I met last time, actually. Oh, yeah, Motoko. Ooh. She had a moment of self realization, but then didn't really do anything off of that, so she goes on the volcano. Then we have Ren, who is definitely one of the big characters this season. And I found her really fascinating. I love her determination to stop Akito, to break the curse, and also, like, how she wants to do everything alone, how she's learning that's not possible, how she's starting to uh, look into working with Toru and all that and her whole mindset. But so I would say Ren is the best, but this last episode, she would refuse to hug Toru and because that Toru ran into a wall, so she is no longer the best, but it's still definitely an interesting and great. Ritsu has appeared twice and I wasn't a big fan of the first time here. Chigurei, I had no idea what he's after or planning, so I don't think I can call him the best, but definitely very interesting. Then uh, Uo is the best because she brings lead pipes to school and that automatically makes her cool. Plus, she's always there for Toru and that is so amazing. And then lastly, we have Yuki, who is obviously the best because like in this season, all of his growth and kind of it turns with himself and his desire to change are just so inspiring. And then last but not least, we have Momiji. And he is the best. But more than that, is Toru. He is a representation of what I love about the show so much. He has been through a lot of suffering and pain, but he is such a pure-hearted person. But more than that is how much he loves everyone. He deeply cares about Toru and just is filled with joy for her and for all the people he cares about, willing to put himself at risk. He is the only one of the Somas who stood up to Akito when Akito showed up at the beach house being hurt in the process. And keep in mind, the curse basically makes it so he can't refuse Akito. Even so, he stood his ground. And that was amazing. And then his dream is to put on a concert for the he loves. And that was also amazing. Just like how when Toru went to hug him, he basically resisted transforming as long as he could just because he wanted to be there with Toru. And yes, Kyo x Toru is probably going to be the canon ship. At least that's the way I see it no longer. But the love between Momi and Toru is so precious that I want that to be where the series goes. So because it's so wonderful. Regardless, I hope that Toru and Momiji are friends for the rest of their lives because they, they deserve people as great as each other. So that's why Momiji goes into the Toru tier because he is the Toru of the sun. As Haru says, he is an air purifier. Haru, and Haru is a very wise man. I don't like that anyway. So yeah, tell me what you thought of my list. The... That was weird. So yeah, tell me what you thought of the list. If you would do a different thing. All right, so I got something in my head for a second. Uh, and I will hopefully remember to put this tier list in the description so you can make your own. So and tell me what you, uh, how you rate the characters. I'm definitely curious. So yes, thank you for watching. I will see you all next time.